Hello, this is the trade site Forex Market Preview and International Economic Data Roadmap for the week beginning Sunday, November 3rd, 2013 and ending uh, Friday, November 8th, 2013. We are into the last two months of the year already, amazingly, in 2013. Uh, let's start out by looking at some of the daily charts, then we'll look at some of the interweek charts, then we'll go through the economic calendar as usual kind of get an overview of what's coming this week, what to prepare for. So here's a look at the U.S. dollar index uh, daily chart uh, going back uh, a couple months, and you can see finally got to move up here uh, uh, this week, late in the week especially. We had only gotten to 11 uh, out of 13 on the seeker towards a buy signal, but now we're breaking out of this range from the last month or so. Maybe that green static trend line comes back into play. We never held this red line that I've been watching, but the green static trend line might be the target for the upside here. Now that we're picking up a little bit of speed, let's also look at the euro dollar. You'll notice that this one uh, rolled over this week. We made some good money on both the euro and the pound this week. Had a nine bar setup that topped it out last week. That gave you this red static trend line. And look at how this week exactly came back and tagged that static trend line. So it's a very, very technical action on the euro dollar. Here's the pound dollar with the seeker. Uh, the 13 sell signal that we had two weeks ago definitely helped and contain the market, came nowhere near the risk line, threatening to break down here. And so all the signs that we had been looking at last week, if you go back and listen to last week's recording about the dollar looking like it was ready to get stronger, have certainly come to fruition here on these charts over the last week. Uh, here's the Aussie dollar. You can see the 13 sell signal there, tagged the risk line exactly and failed and has come into play. You can uh, We're eight bars down towards a new setup phase. So a nine would complete that, and we're getting near that static trend line. Uh, let me also show you the uh, New Zealand dollar one, which accelerated a little more of the downside. This one had the 13 sell signal on both the seeker and the comer on the daily, and uh, sold off a little more sharply. So again, all the stuff we were looking at last weekend in terms of the dollar likely getting stronger uh, definitely played out this week. Let's take a look at the intraweek action. This is 30-minute bars on the euro dollar. You can see that for the week we actually traded. And this is why, remember, we had... Uh, a 200 pip and a 100 pip winner to close out the week here. Uh, Euro dollar traded over 300 pips of range for the whole week. Now, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday were not exciting, but Thursday and Friday, two days. This is this is all we really want to see. If we can get three days a week with this type of general action, even if it's not in the same direction, although certainly two days in a row in the same direction is nice because it gives us the opportunity to carry our winning trade over. But even if we get these types of ranges, uh, you know, two or three days a week. I'm going to go back to full size, so I'm anticipating that we can get back to that soon. Uh, the Forex results for October are posted and including our partials, which are usually taken for half size, about uh, 40 pips in the money. We ended up netting out 275 pips for the month, which is not bad, but we've still been half size because of these ranges. So I'd love to go back to full size, and we may be able to do that soon if, we get, if this Thursday and Friday action ends up being any sign uh, of what's to come. Let's take a look at the pound in 30-minute bars. A little less range here, about 300 pips, not horrible, um, better than we've been seeing, but it was all in the last two days. And again, we had a, a almost 100 pip winner here on Friday. I mean, it was kind of flat most of the other days if you look at it, 60 pips of range here and there. Let's take a look at the Aussie and see what it did. This is one we'll probably start trading more as the ranges expand. Uh, about 200 pips total, but a little bit of back and forth action and uh, certainly something that will be tradable for us. Uh, in the near future. New Zealand was a little less interesting this particular week. All right, so let's take a look at the data that's coming out this week. First of all, U.S. and Canada changing their clock Saturday night were the last ones, uh, so the whole world will have done it. Again, that can have some impact on messing with the uh, technicals for a day or so, so just keep that in mind as the rest of the world is not on the same hour-by-hour -hour count that we are in terms of when the business is being done. Uh, 7.30 p.m. Sunday night, MI inflation gauge of Australia. Japan's on a bank holiday, New Zealand ANZ commodity prices, retail sales, and HPI out of Australia. Takes us to Monday morning. We've got uh, manufacturing PMI out of various parts of Europe, construction PMI out of the UK, factory orders for both August and September in the U.S. Because, again, they, were, they missed one with the government shutdown. So they're both coming out at uh, the same time. And then the uh, FOMC, uh, Member Powell speaking, we've got... Uh, AIG Services Index out of Australia that night. Monetary base out of Japan. Rate announcement out of Australia. We got retail sales out of UK. That leads us into Tuesday where we've got Spanish unemployment change. Not a big deal. 
Halifax HPI, Switzerland CPI, Services PMI out of the UK. Uh, we've got EU economic forecasts out of Europe and their PPI. U.S. then has the uh, non-manufacturing PMI, the, T, the uh, IBD tip F economic optimism number. Uh, Tuesday night, New Zealand's unemployment data, labor cost index, Japan's monetary meeting minutes from the last uh, Bank of Japan meeting, Australia's trade balance, 8 p.m. Eastern, 10-year bond auction out of Japan, takes us into Wednesday, where we've got the services PMI data out of various sectors of Europe, manufacturing and industrial production out of the U.K., retail sales out of Europe, German factory orders, challenger job cuts out of the U.S., building permits at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time out of Canada, CB leading index in the U.S., crude oil inventories here in the U.S., AIG construction index, we've got unemployment data, unemployment rate out of Australia Wednesday night, leading indicators out of Japan, SEC of consumer climate and foreign currency reserves out of Switzerland, this is going into Thursday now, 10-year bond auctions out of Spain and France, German industrial production, rate announcement out of both the Bank of England and the ECB European Bank, Central Bank, those will be back-to-back -back in the wee hours of Thursday morning here in the U.S., followed by their press conferences. Finally, because this number was delayed, and this will be a big one for us, advanced GDP. This is going to be the first look at GDP. And by the way, these numbers are all off by an hour because of the time change. It should be 8.30 a.m. Eastern time uh, on Thursday will be that first look at GDP for Q3 that got delayed from this last week and would have been a big one. It'd be interesting to see what we get there. The usual unemployment claims data, advanced GDP price index, natty gas uh, at 10.30 a.m. Eastern time. Fed, Fed member Stein speaking. We've got consumer credit out of the U.S. late in the session. Uh, then going into Friday, Chinese trade balance, Switzerland's unemployment rate, German trade balance, French industrial production, government budget balance, and trade balance. Retail sales out of Switzerland, trade balance out of the U.K. Housing starts out of Canada. Employment and unemployment change and unemployment rate out of Canada, along with the U.S. unemployment rate. So we've got another one of our big three right there. We had CPI this last week. Uh, and we have uh, we had the Fed this last week, and we're going to have the GDP first look, which is a quarterly number. Uh, so there's some big data there. P, uh, core price index, personal income and spending, and then preliminary uh, University of Michigan consumer sentiment. Bernanke speaking, China's got their CPI and PPI Friday night for whatever reason, and a lot of other data out of China on Saturday. New loans, money supply, industrial production, fixed asset, fixed asset investment, and retail sales. So the big ones this week are going to be that GDP number uh, that we'll be watching. Uh, the first look at, at GDP, that's on Thursday morning, and then the unemployment data on Friday. That'll be the focus point uh, for Forex. Still going to start out half size, despite the fact that we had two days of improvement. I need to see a little more than that. And, of course, Wednesday night and Thursday night will be half size ahead of two of the biggest numbers we can get. Uh, so probably not this week to go back to full size. But if we do see some decent action, it's a very good possibility we'll go for it next week. We will be in the lab trading it as usual. Hope to see you there. Charts brought to you by eSignal11. Have a great trading week.